Well, good morning. I am Charzat Morgan, and I wanted to give you my thoughts about the debate yesterday between former President Donald Trump and current Vice President Kamala Harris as they're debating each other for the presidential debate. I really was wondering, going into it, I was really wondering why Kamala even agreed to the debate because every interview I've seen her do, every time she talks, she sounds really ridiculous. And I thought she was going to totally flop. Donald Trump knows how to turn every situation in his favor. He has this way with words that even when he's shown to be wrong, he comes out looking like a winner. But somehow she outsmarted him. And I was rooting for Trump. <laughs> I wanted him to win. She outsmarted him. She got his goat. She came in prepared. Now I'm just talking about the debate itself, how they showed up in terms of their performance, okay? She came in prepared. She had good energy. And she did a bunch of things where she like mocked him. Her facial expressions were like, you know, whereas he was looking straight ahead, like, ah, I'm not really bothered by you. She used a lot of facial expressions where she was like, like, really? You're kidding. Like, what? You're full of it? Like, she used really good facial expressions to, to be like, ridicule him, demean him, and all that. In a, in a way that worked for her and she came in with a bunch of good points and she threw him off his game. And what he did, instead of sticking with his usual self of deflecting and saying, oh, you're just fake news or even poking fun at the moderators for their fake news or whatever, he, he totally was goaded by her and he ended up being defensive. So that was not a good look. He was being defensive. And I was like, what the heck happened there? Like, did he do that on purpose? Or I do not think he likes to lose. I think that he just did not do well because he did not know how to keep his center. He did not know how to stay in his own energy. He just got thrown off course by her. And I think she also effectively used a lot of female-only language that it's kind of tricky to come back on. You don't want to, he didn't want to be seen maybe as the anti, you know, putting down women or putting down blacks. So I think that because he's a man, he wasn't able to take her on when she talked about female issues. Like he just blew it. Now, second, her hairstyle to me was very interesting because she had her right ear exposed with her hairdo and there was an earring showing. And then this side of her hair was very covered up like this. So this was back and this was very pressed, like hair sprayed forward like this, whereas this side was back. And this, she kept her face mostly like this, sometimes like this. I'm wondering if she had an earpiece in there, something in her ear. It's very strange that her ear was covered up. You gotta look at her hairdo. I'm very suspicious of that. Okay, very suspicious of her hairstyle, which indicates to me there was an earpiece in there. That's what I think. I think she was getting help. Okay, now, what else was in, what else did we notice about the debate? Let's talk about what wasn't happening at the debate. Why were there only two people? This is a reminder to us that our democracy consists of an installed puppet of Kamala, a Trump who's really not that much different, we'll get to that, and everybody else is shut out. Because, you know, we can pick between 20 different types of ketchup. We can pick between thousands of different watches on Amazon. But we can only pick between Twiddledee and Twiddledum. 
because you know it's democracy and that's our freedom it gives us the illusion that we can choose but really why wasn't jill stein on the stage the green party the libertarian candidate the socialist the communist all these candidates that are actually on the ballot and let's not even talk about the fact that even the people that got on the ballot have been assaulted by legal warfare, legal fare, lawfare, to get them off the ballot on the, finding the tiniest technicalities in a font of a footnote or something. As Jill Stein was saying yesterday, they had three times the number of signatures they needed to get on the ballot in Nevada, 30,000. And yet, the Democratic Party sued them to get them off the ballot because that's democracy. Democracy is you choose between me and me. <laughs> I get to define democracy. You choose between me and me because they're all representing the same interests, the corporations. Whether it's Donald Trump or Kamala, Notice what else wasn't discussed. First of all, like I already said, what we didn't see, sometimes you have to look for what you didn't see. We didn't see other candidates that have actually quite different views, like the anti-genocide candidate, Jill Stein. She's the only anti-genocide candidate. That's why she has no chance. But just so you know, there are other candidates that are on the ballots that are excluded and sued out. They're sued. Uh, the Democrats don't even want them on the ballot. So, and so the two people that are left standing are because they're sucking the dicks. They're basically, they're not even good prostitutes because a good prostitute has good boundaries and selects her clients. I would know. These people don't have boundaries or selection. They are street whores they'll sell their soul to whatever so we all have trump and kamala obama clinton bush all of them pretty much are low-level street whores because they have no standards or honor they have all both sold out and they're both for wars. So again, the topics that were not discovered, wars, the military industrial complex, because you can't go against them. Wall Street, you cannot go against that. Uh, big Pharma, cannot go against that. Uh, the healthcare system, why don't we have Medicare for all? Like every other country. I'm gonna gaslight you and tell you that socialism but the big companies get socialism. They get the tax cuts. The rich people get more and more and more and more tax cuts. And it's their, it's their stuff that is made into law because when the politicians enact laws and conduct government in a way to benefit them, that's socialism for them. McDonnell Douglas, Raytheon, Boeing, they get socialism. In fact, they get money, they get favors, they get bailouts. So they try to gaslight us. So again, what wasn't discussed, the, the falling dollar, the wars, the big pharma, the declining health of our country, the decaying inner cities, the loss of manufacturing. Um, I mean, all these endless wars. I don't know what else I left out. So they just focus on little things. And when it comes to immigration, the reason we have so many illegal immigrants is because we, the United States, have destabilized most of South America with the coups and the sanctions, destabilized. And so these people are fleeing. That's why they're here. We destabilized their countries. We destabilized Haiti. 88 coups. But we're the good guys. Don't forget we're the good guys because that's what they told us. And they use words, by the way, they use words like they'll say, like the North Korean regime, the Iranian regime. They're countries. Iran is a country, North Korea is a country. We could as well say the American regime, the US regime, 
you know, they use words. And so the whole ABC moderator thing, you know, they, they went along, you know, they, they made it seem like you have a choice between two people and they raise questions that are really irrelevant because they don't want you to see that there are other candidates and they don't want to talk about the big issues. It's kind of like being a kid in your home and your parents are constantly not getting along but they're not talking about it, but you know something's wrong, but no one wants to talk about what's wrong. So you just kind of get the sense that something is wrong, and I think people do get the sense something is wrong. And today on 9-11, we again remember that um, buildings that are hit by airplanes can do a gravity free fall as if they were detonated but we know they were not because they told us so and that buildings that were not hit by anything at all could collapse in free fall hours later World Trade Center 7 and that all the cameras at the Pentagon could suddenly not work but, but, the, but the camera at the gas station worked so but but just believe them because they told you so just believe them because they tell you only the truth. So I expected the debate to be entertaining and I expected Donald Trump to be entertaining and he wasn't. He was boring, he was defensive and Kamala got one over on him. And in the end, I think I just realized that nothing's gonna change in this country he didn't even bring out anything about the deep state or about the endless wars. They're both going to keep the genocide going because, you know, Israel believes in this book, this mythological book that tells them that they're chosen and everybody else is worthless. So they should just kill everybody. You know, those brown skinned people whose land it actually is. Nothing's going to change. And in the end, when I think about it, I don't think that the people in any country like their leaders. Like the Germans do not like their leaders at all. Germany is very upset with their leaders and how they have become part of NATO and allowed the US to blow up the Nord Stream pipeline. Saudi Arabia, all those countries are ruled by um, like kings. Because uh, the people are like Palestinian, but these kings are ruling them and controlling them. Even in Iran, like how many people in Iran like this tyrannical government where women have to wear all this hijabi maybe some people like it now here in russia i hear that 80 percent of the russians do like vladimir putin i don't know if that's true but i think that most people do not like their government so i don't think that's unique to us that the people who are in charge of the government are usually people who are very power hungry and they're usually bad people. They do not care about their citizens. They, it's a myth that it's a myth that the people in power care about us and want to represent us. They're representing themselves and their interests are at odds with the people. So they end up representing the 1% that is also rich and they end up being bad people. I cannot see how uh, bombing uh, Palestine is a good thing for anyone. This fake war with Russia, like why are we fighting Russia? Like what the fuck? But again, uh, you know, they tell you that Russia is bad, so you're supposed to believe them because you know they would never lie to us. Anyway, I hope that these people don't get us into another world war because some people really seem to think that um, that's a good idea. Anyway, Donald Trump flopped on the debate. I think that um, he let Kamala get under his skin. <laughs> There's no way around it. But in the end, it doesn't matter who's in office because that president is just a figurehead and we're going to keep making more wars maybe doing more lockdowns, doing more surveillance of the people, dampening free speech, declining health, 
and I'm just wondering if I should even stop watching the news because I was hoping that this election season we could get some people in you know like I had volunteered for the Kennedy campaign I had thought that we could actually have some kind of change, have some kind of peace, actually have people in power who want to make America a better place. And that after seeing the debate yesterday, I pretty much realized that I don't think anything's going to change. But I'm curious what you think, and I will be back for the comments. She kicked his ass. <laughs> That's all I can say.